you. Lots of gold pans waiting for you there too. Take the poke sack and dump the entire contents of the poke into the pan and set the poke sack aside. We'll pick that up later. <clears throat> the first thing you want to do then is drown it with water and begin to shake it up and stir it vigorously. This action here kind of simulates what was going on inside that trommel. See, the water and the agitation helps create a void or a space between all the sands and stones and allows that heavy, heavy gold to settle between those spaces to the bottom of the pan. That's where you want the gold to be before you pour anything out of here. So, step one is lots of water and lots of shaking. Just get after it. I want to hear those stones rattle and grind inside that pan. Jerry Lee Lewis would have made the best gold pan in the world. A whole lot of shaking going on. Okay, next I want to introduce you to this angle. This angle is very important. I'm going to talk about this a lot. These gold pans are designed to be held and used at this angle. See, as you shake it initially flat and the gold settles to the bottom, and then you introduce this angle, it has hit this plane, and then it begins to slide down that plane until it intersects that crease, that bend in the pan. That's the absolute bottom of the pan. If you look at it from underneath, it's easier to grasp this. It slides down that plane to that point, right where that water's dripping. Note that this point is lower than the lip of the pan. The gold is stuck right here. It cannot leave the pan. So we don't want to hold the pan flat anymore. That scatters the gold all over the place. You don't know where it is. We keep it at that angle. It slides to that one spot. Now we know right where it is, and we can control it hereafter. So we do not pan flat. We want to keep it at this angle at all times. And at that angle, we shake it. That helps that gold sink to that bottom low spot. I also point out that at this angle, it kind of creates like a real wide V right here. And we're settling the gold into the bottom of that V. I also refer to this as the pocket of the pan. So again, we don't want to pan flat. We keep it at this pan, this angle at all times. I'm going to have you guys repeat this. We do not pan flat. Let me hear you say it. That was pitiful. One more time. We do not pan flat. Good. That will burn in your brain. Hopefully you'll have a new skill to put on your resumes here when you're in, when you head home. See, gold is one of the densest, heaviest elements that exist on our planet. It's hard to conceptualize that because it's so rare that we ever get to hold any sizable amount of gold in our hand. However, you might be experienced with lead. Everybody know a little piece of lead one time or another? You know how it's got that heft about it that's just disproportionate to the size of that object, right? Well, gold is twice as dense, twice as heavy as lead. So it's going to sink to this pocket right now. It's already there. That's what this shaking is for. At this angle, we do not pan flat. And here's how we get rid of the sand. At that same angle, let's call it 45 degrees, I kind of float it here on the surface. And at that angle, I now push down and lift up. Look at the water. Push down and lift up. It comes in like a wave on the beach, down and up. It skims just the topmost layer of sand off that pile. There's no gold in that top layer. The gold's at the bottom. So here we're going to shake it at that angle. That's step one. And then we're going to dip it, step two, at that same angle, down and up, taking it to the beach. And we just repeat these two st simple steps until we're down to a couple tablespoons. Now, a couple words of caution here first on our way. So as we encounter some bigger stones, which are likely to do, I use my fingertips to lightly drag the big stones, just the biggest ones, to the top here. I rinse them off good in the pan, make sure they're clean, and then set them in the tub. Or you can throw them in your neighbor's pan, let them deal with it over there. <laughs> now on that point, I want to mention here that it's important to have water in a pan as you do that. If you pour the water out and you get to fiddling around in here and you're play, playing with the pretty rocks and stuff and you get material stuck to your fingers, and then you go to rinse your fingers off, where'd the gold go that was stuck to my finger? Down in that tub. That's all right, we'll get it later. But if you want to keep it in your pan, always have water in the pan. Rinse the stones off in the pan first and then set them out. Okay, back to step one. I'm shaking it at that angle. We do not pan flat. At that same angle, I pause and I dip it vertically down and up out of the water. Taking it to the beach, let the water skim a little bit of sand out of the pan. A couple more things here. So there's none of this. There's no pivoting. Right? Nor is it a horizontal action. That will push the gold out of the pan, too. It's a fixed vertical angle, straight down and up, down and up. I'm shaking it a little bit at that angle, and I dip it a little bit at that same angle. Another word of caution here, I see there's a tendency for folks that want to kind of combine these two steps together. And what I mean by that is, if, you know, it's important to shake. That helps the gold sink to the pocket. You want to dip and get rid of the extra sand, but try to avoid doing both at the same time. What that means is if I'm shaking this sand out and I'm shaking it, let it spill over the lip of that pan, you're shaking everything in the pan. You're shaking gold away too. 
This method here, by contrast, dipping it gently down and up out of the water, taking it to the beach, if you look at the water, it's only affecting the topmost layer of the sand pile. The gold remains nice and stable and steady at the bottom of this pile. So here I'm shaking it at that angle. Here I'm dipping it at that same angle. One or the other, but not both at the same time. All right, we're just going to repeat these two steps. I'm getting real close here. When you get down to a couple tablespoons, it's really not necessary to pour any more away. Right about there is good enough. If you see any last, it should just pretty much be sand at this point. And then with, here's the last step here. I use I reserve a little bit of water to immerse that pile. I put the water at the bottom. I call this my swirly trick. As if this water is a marble, I'm going to lower it over the pile and bring it back to the bottom. My water marble comes over that pile, gently rinses and brings some sand out with it. See, another revolution. Some more sand flows down. The sand is light. Ignore it. Keep your eyes up here for things that don't want to move. That gold is heavy. It's on the bottom. It's the densest, heaviest thing in this pan. It's going to be the last thing you see. Eventually, all the light sands are going to rinse off of it, and the heavy gold remains behind. There's your pay. That's what we call brand new money. We'll come into this camera screen here to try to give you a close up of that. That's the train to hold it right there. You see, I also walked the length of this train car. Now, when you're ready to recover the gold out of the pan, we've got little black film canisters for you nearby. Pour the water out of the pan. The gold's still going to be damp. Set the can.